Welcome everybody, this is SharePoint Finance and Practices webcast and this time we're going to talk about how to define an icon for your client side web parts uh, which are being then used in SharePoint Online or within on-premises. Uh, my name is Lisa Juvonen, I'm a Senior Program Manager uh, in Microsoft in, uh, from SharePoint Engineering and with me today doing the live demo is Valdek Mastercard. So Valdek, will you do the quick intros as well? Sure thing. Hi everybody, my name is Valdek Mastercard. I am Office Development MVP, I work at Rancor and today we will be talking about defining icons for your client-side web parts. Excellent. So uh, this is one of the topics which is kind of a simple topic uh, in the end, but uh, quite often when you're creating a web part, it actually has a pretty big meaning because probably you don't want to have, a, let's say, a simplistic uh, icon showing just the page. You want to actually design what kind of icon uh, is being visible whenever somebody is picking up your web part because that drives the, the, the usage of the web part as well. So how do we actually do this? There's a few different options how to make this happen. First of all, uh, we configure the used icon uh, within the manifest file of your web part. Uh, and there's a few different options to make this happen, which we'll go through uh, in a demo and following slide as well. But then based on your uh, definition in the manifest file, uh, then that web part is being visible in the web part picker. Technically, in the introduction, we said that, well, you can uh, use the, the web part and the, the, the icons in on-premises and in SharePoint Online. Right now, within the SharePoint 2016 feature back too, um, the web part uh, experience is still on a classic page, and you, there's no supported way of, of changing that icon right now. We're looking into that one potentially in the future. But this uh, icon setting uh, within the manifest file is really around the modern web part picker and uh, targeted for SharePoint Online right now and in the future for on-premises. Now, there's like mentioned, there's three different ways of making this happen. So three different options of defining that icon. So the option number one is that you define a used icon uh, from a set of Office UI Fabric icons. So there's a predefined set of uh, icons which we publish out from Office UI Fabric, and you can define that with a identifier of the icon, and that is then getting rendered uh, within the web park picker. The second option uh, is really around uh, referencing an external image using an absolute URL. Technically, theoretically, and the super theoretical thing, it doesn't actually have to be an absolute URL, but in practice, it is an absolute URL which we will be referencing to make things work for you. We were having a long debate with Waldeck on, on this one just before we started the webcast recording. Uh, so theoretically, uh, uh, theoretically, uh, come on, not the absolute. Uh, Come on, well, they help me. A relative, a relative URL. Thank you, relative URL. <laughs> but it, it would actually get said and make the whole thing quite complicated. So absolute URL would be the way to do that. And that would mean that we would need to figure out a location where the image is being hosted, that it's the URL is being accessible by the persons uh, who are using the web part. Um, so, and uh, whenever the web part is getting then uh, added on a page, we'll request the image from that location. Uh, and then. The third option is to use a base64 encoded image. And this is essentially what it means is that you do a base64 encoding of the image and you put that one into the manifest. So essentially every single time um, you the, the web part picker is getting uh, used, that encoded uh, string is getting transformed to be an image and it's, and it's getting rendered uh, within the page. The, maybe the one downside of this one, and while it's going to show this one in practice as well, is that when you're doing the base64 encoding for the image, that's quite big string. So technically, um, that will uh, eat up some of the uh, bandwidth uh, or the bits which are uh, traveling through the, the wire. Now. Um, any anything else? What you want to what we want to talk about here, or should we jump directly on a demo? Waldek, anything on well, your mind? Well, so so there are a few things that I that I, that I think are good to understand as as well, right? So if you look at the option one, where we reference an icon from from uh, from Office UI fabric, that's a convenient way because you only re, uh, re, refer to a string and the icon is there, and yes. the the icon that you would use. Is going to size as well, right? So imagine that somebody would change the theme, or they will zoom in browser, or they use higher DPI because uh, they they cannot see well, right? So that icon will by itself adapt to all of that. So you don't have to worry about that. True. Now, if you would use image, there are specific requirements that you have to take into account, right? Because first of all, URL. If it will be an absolute one, sure, that is going to work. But if you would use a relative one, which in theory you can, you have to keep in mind that that URL will 
irrelative to the page where the web part is placed, not the bundle. Correct. And as you know, users can place the web parts whenever they, wherever they want. So you have to take into account that if you would use a relative URL, that would have to work for every single page across the whole internet, right? So that is one. Two, the the image, right? Uh, the official guidance says that that image has to be 40 by 28 pixels. Well, it can be bigger, and if if it is, it's going to be proportionally sized to fit dimensions. Yeah. The thing the thing there is, if somebody would zoom in browser or they use higher DPI again, there is a chance that if if you would use exact size, your icon will not look well in that zoom, right? Absolutely. So you might use a bigger image that will then adapt. But then again, you're downloading more bits, and then the question is. Well, so how big should it, sh uh, should it be? Well, you can't really tell up front because you, you don't know what the setup will be of user who might add the web part to the page. So it's hard to factor all of that in, right? Sure. Uh, and also, you should take into account that the image should not include a background because somebody might change a the theme and white might not be white anymore. Sure. Right? So there are quite a few things that you have to take into account that you don't need to worry about if you use uh, fabric icon, right? And then the last part is for the base 64 image, well, the big challenge it saves you from is you don't need to actually deploy an image. You can encode all of the image in a big string and then include it in manifest as as I said, um, that string is going to be Included in manifest, there's going to be that that is loaded by SPFX on every page. So you are pulling down that big string every single time you request a page, which is not optimal, right? So yeah. it's easier from deployment point of view, but it adds the uh, well, it adds to your uh, payload. Absolutely. Right. So that's also uh, a, a thing for for you to take into account. Absolutely. So I guess now it's a good time to switch to a demo. Yes, let's actually do that. So let's do a quick demo <clears throat> on all of those three options or walking through uh, what does those options mean and where we can actually get that information and how do we get the Dolphus UI fabric uh, terms and all of that. So let's do that. Let's flip on uh, Waldex computer and come back on closing up the webcast. All right. So let's have a look at how you would set up an icon for the web part in practice. So here I have a web part here on the left hand side. And when you try to add that to a page, you will see three instances of it, right? So as we said, you can define the icon in the manifest in pre-configured entries in web part. So each uh, pre-configured web part can have different icon, right? Because if you would add, if you would create a web part such as query, right, you can set it up to show news or to show images or to show tasks. And each of these would have an icon that represents the config of that, the web part. So as you can see here, we have three options. So let's walk through them one by one to see how they work, where the image comes from, and what are the pros and cons and the things that you have to take into account. So first, let's start with the, the icon here that comes from Fabric. All right, so here, let's open the first pre con if in figured um, entry, and here we see that we use the office fabric icon font name property and specify the name of the icon that, that we want to use. Now, of course, the first question you want to ask is how do you get the list of all allowed icons or supported icons? Well, you can get them from, from internet. So here in browser, you can go to uh, developer.microsoft.com slash en slash dash us fabric, that URL. And then on that page, you go to styles, icons, and here you, you will see a list of all of the, in the icons from which you can choose. So in our case, we were, were looking for an icon associated with weather, so let's look for sun. All right, and here we have three of them with a plus, with a question mark or just sunny. So we can grab this name and then add it verbatim as is here, and that will eventually show up here as icon of a sun in toolbox. Right, so that's option one. 
Option two is to use a URL, which you see here. So as we said, uh, we want to use a URL of an image. Here in our project, I have an icon uh, of an image of a sun, which is here, SVVG. And here I use a relative URL, right? And in my case, I am in Workbench. So that's why I want to simplify that. I want to use a relative URL. But in a real world, when you're going to deploy the web part to production, you actually want to use absolute URL so that it will work on every page, right? So that you don't need to worry about where the web part is placed, where it's deployed to, where are, 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 are the um, um, images stored, right? So you will avoid all of the, these issues by including absolute URL. Uh, important part here is the size, right? The image has to be 40 by 28, as we said, but you also have to have to take into account, like the case that I have here, I am zoomed in in browser. That image that currently shows is bigger. And I don't lose the quality because of two reasons. First of all, my image is bigger than that. If you choose a bigger image, it will be scaled down to fit dimensions. Second of all, and that's also important part, I used an SV, SVG image, which is a vector, right? So that scales, I can scale that as big as I want and it will always look sharp the way it's supposed to be. If you would use, use a bitmap like PNG, JPEG, or GIF, you would lose quality. You, you would actually, the more you zoom in, the worse the image would actually look, right? So that's also an interesting thing to take into account. And whenever you can, whenever that is an option, you should always, uh, choose to use a vector over, over a bitmap because you can scale that more easily without, without losing quality. And also another thing is, take into account the background, like all of that can be themed, right? So a white here might not always be white. So also take into account that the image you use should not have a background. So it will always match the branding and not you will see a white block with your, your, your image. Right? And finally, the last option is a base64 encoded string, which you see here. And actually, these two look exactly the same. Why? Because I created the base64 encoded string from this image, from this SVG. Uh, the way you can do that is there are a number of sites on the internet which you, you can use to do that. Uh, the one that I use is the base64-image.de, and it works re really simple. So the only thing you have to do is to grab image, upload it here, and you will get a string. So let me show you how it works in practice. Let me get the image, which is the sun.svg, and drag and drop it here to the side. Now it's done encoding. You can here click on that show code option. And then here you will get exactly the whole string that you then need to include in manifest instead of URL. So if we open the third config for the web parts that we have, here you can see the exact same string, all of it. So the whole image is now being shown as a string or is, or is being included as a string. And the cool thing is that if you go back to toolbox, what users will see are actually image. So to them, there is no difference between how you, whether you use a URL or the whole string. The great thing or the benefit for you is that because there is no URL, you don't need to, the, uh, deploy the, uh, the, the, the image. You, you don't need to worry about where to put it, to maintain it, and all of that, right? You just include a string, and it's self-contained, co 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 and everything's in it, right? So that simplifies it a lot. Now, as you can see, it adds quite a lot of uh, bits and bytes, bytes, actually, to your uh, to manifest. And the manifest is being included on every single page. So if you have many web parts with many icons included in them, your page size will grow a lot. So that's also a thing for you to take into account, not to overdo this, right? Because you cannot cache this. That will be included for every instance of every web part you have in manifest, and then the manifest is included on every single page, whether you, your web part is on it or not, right? So that's also uh, a thing for you to keep in mind. Right, uh, and uh, um, and also here the great thing is that you can use base64 encoding with bitmaps, with uh, vectors, right? And again, what you want to use eventually is is a, a, um, a vector, right? Because that will scale. 
So with that, Vasa, do you do you have anything to ask, or we well, wrap it up? And... Maybe yep. maybe two points. So obviously, uh, this is this webcast is around the web part icons, but just to pinpoint uh, the uh, base sixty four encoding <coughs> option also works within the list view <coughs> list view command sets uh, if you're creating an extension. So that's an option uh, there as well. Um, and also, there's uh, list view commands as are the buttons within the list views and libraries. Um, so you can actually use uh, similar kind of options there. Maybe one thing to uh, note uh, on the options. So if you have a look on the suggested uh, web parts in here, uh, or if you go to the out of the box page, you can see that all of the out of the box web parts are actually using fabric icons. Uh, so that if you can find a suitable fabric icon for you and that works for you, probably the best option if you want to align on the look and feel of the out-of-the-box web parts. Now, if you want to completely differentiate from out-of-the-box web parts, you can certainly have yellow and red and blue and uh, whatever colors in your web part icon. Um, then it will jump out of the web part picker. Uh, and I guess for that, I'm not, not not sure if that's already available, but another way you could uh, ensure that the web parts you've built stand out from what's available out of the box is to add them to to a custom group. Which isn't so, there for the time being. So you can define a which exactly. group, a which group yeah. you can, uh, which your web part is being uh, hosted by using the configuration in manifest, but you can't yeah. actually define a custom group. So yeah. But if, yeah, when that option, I assume that, that it, it will be available at some point, and the more you ask for it, the bigger the odds that it will ar exactly. um, arrive er okay. um, earlier. Exactly, right? exactly. Uh, yeah, so that would also be an option for you to, um, to match the UI available out of the box and yet have your web parts be clearly distinguished from what's available out of the box. Absolutely, absolutely. Good point. Cool. I think that's it uh, for the demo section. So let's flip back on the slides and close up the webcast. So thank you, Wildek, on that one. Uh, good walkthrough on the different options. Like like we started, uh, the webcast is not really rocket science and not super, super complex stuff. But on the other hand, it's good to get this clarified and, and show the options and what those options means in practice. Um, there's three options like like recovered in the webcast and also shown in the demo as well. And from those, there's there's always advantages and disadvantages in, in, in the, either one of them. Um, choose wisely would be probably <laughs> the right <laughs> recommendation. Anything we want to add there, uh, Waldek? <laughs> um, even though it seems, seems a trivial thing to set an icon, it's important part, right? Because it True. allows the users to better understand what you, your web part is going to do, and if the web part you've built is exactly the one they need. So if you use the right icon, as, as we said at the start, it's an important marker that, that influence adoption, right? So always use an icon that represents what the web part will do, right? Because that, that will make it easier for, for users to actually pick the right one and not l look for things that might not be there. You mean that don't use the sunny logo or smiley in every single web part? Or the page, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because every web part will fit on a page. Well, yeah, but that's not really the case, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> cool. So I think that's it for this one. So thank you everybody for watching, and uh, please keep uh, keep your feedback coming around the SharePoint framework and SharePoint development. We'll come up with a new webcast uh, sooner or later. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.